Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at case statements with SQLite. Let's get started. So first off, let's talk about case statements. All right. Now case statements allow us to map one or more conditions to a corresponding value for each condition. So we can start with a case statement and again with the case and it's going to include, uh, it'll include everything that's in between and then it will stop with the end. So between those two keywords, we're going to specify a condition uh, with a when condition and a then condition. So let's go on and actually uh, just do this. So first off, let me go on and open up, um, actually let me just create up a new, fold, uh, a new file here. Let me save this as something like um, case statements example.sql. All right, so first let's go on and say uh, uh, select report code year month day wind speed uh, and then we'll do something like from I need to do this just to connect this. Okay, so we grabbed it. We are connected to our database. So let's do something like um, mm, case here, and we'll do a uh, win wind speed is greater than or equal to 40 then we're going to say high when wind speed is greater than or equal to 30 then we're going to say uh, uh, moderate and we need to go back over here and say uh, and uh, wind speed speed is less than 40 then moderate else here we'll say it's low so we're going to end that statement and I need to move this from down here and we'll call this um, as wind severity and then we'll say we want to limit it to 10 well why didn't it like that what did I do is it because I don't have a comma here yeah okay so let me show you the whole code really quickly and we'll talk through it again uh, so first off, we want to use a select statement. Okay, we want to grab the report code, the year, month, day, wind speed, and then we're going to use this case. Now think about this as this is still technically part of the select statement. So if you're doing like an aggregate function of some sort, um, then we want to go on and create up our case. Now our case statement here is going to use the when argument. And again, here it's starting with case, it is ending with end okay and everything in between here is going to be um, our statement itself so when our wind speed is less than or equal to 40 then we're going to use high okay so this is going to actually create it's taking a text um, output okay and the input in here is going to be some sort of numerical object okay so we're checking here if this is true if this is true then put this when this condition is true, then make it moderate, else it's going to be low. And again, we're going to limit this to 10. So again, we don't want the whole output. We just want the first 10 rows. Okay, so let's run this again. And we can see here that the first 10 rows, how we have the report, the year, the month, the day, the wind speed, and then with the wind severity. And again, here you can see that they all happen to be low. Um, and let's actually maybe try doing something a little bit a little bit different here let's try 
uh, grouping things. Okay, so let's add in a grouping statement. So now when we use this case statements, okay, and group them, we can create something extremely powerful transformations. Uh, so we're going to be converting values again based on one or more conditions before we aggregate them. And this is going to give us even more possibilities to kind of slice and dice our data in a lot of interesting ways. So let's do this again as what? Mm, let's leave all of this the same. And then we're going to add one more in here. And let's do count all as a record count from station data. And we're going to group by group by one, two, and we'll limit 10. Okay, and I'll discuss this here in just a second. So we can actually see here that we went through and we did our record count, okay, of uh, one and two. Uh, and so what, what we're actually doing in here is actually going through and grabbing um, all of our data that actually has the proper uh, the proper record counts that we want in here. Uh, and again, this is very useful to us when we're wanting to make some higher level reporting. Um, and we can actually, we can, let me just remove the limit here just so we can see everything for fun. Um, and you can see here that we have all of our records in here. And again, we have almost the entire, um, the entire amount in there. Um, no, that's not actually, I did not want to do that. Let me move back. I want to clear that. I want to clear that. Don't save. Okay, so I was telling it to output everything. Uh, let's do maybe one more where we do this uh, zero or null case statements. Okay, and again, this is a relatively uh, simple trick for us to do, okay? Now, when we apply this, we're gonna get different filters and we're also gonna aggregate the values and then we're going to uh, use a bit of a group by statement as well. So let's do something like a select year, month. We want to um, round, and here we're going to do these case statements in a single line, okay? Um, so it'll kind of, um, you can think about them as like an if else statement in Python or similar to some of the if else statements, uh, single line if else statements in JavaScript and whatnot. So we'll do something like round sum case when a tornado is true, then we want the precipitation else zero end and then we are going to round by two and do something like as tornado precipitation. Uh, and then let's do one more and I'm gonna copy this whole line, put it below and we'll do, we'll call this no tornado precipitation and we'll change this to zero here. So we're going to have two cases where we calculate up whether there's precipitation for uh, how much precipitation there was when there wasn't a tornado and then when there was a tornado. Uh, and then we'll also do, oh, I need to hear that comma, from our station data. And we want to group by here, we want the year and the month. And then we also want to limit this to 10. So then we can see here that this case, uh, <clears throat> case statement is actually doing quite a bit of, of work for us, okay? Um, and again, what we've seen here is, oh, and we still have some null values in here. What do we want to do with those? Maybe we should have all done a coalesce um, or something else, but we'll, we'll, that's fine as well. 
Um, now this statement again is going to do a lot of really cool things, it's especially complex aggregation. Now by leveraging this condition to make the value zero, if the condition is not met, we're basically ignoring that value and we're going to exclude it from the sum. Uh, <coughs> Now let's also, um, again, since adding zero has no impact. Uh, so we could also do so with a calculation using our min and max operators as well. Um, and we'll, maybe we'll give that a try here in just a second. So let's also see if hmm, I want to deal with this tornado precipitation null values. I would like them to be uh, coalesced. So let's see what what would we like to do here about the precipitation. So I think we should be able to do something like coalesce zero. Yep, and that gives us our, our zero. So what I actually did here is I made sure that this precipitation when it was null, we also forced it to be zero as well. Um, so then we can actually go through and deal with those null values that are popping or popping up for us before. So now here we have non tornado precipitation instead of those null values, we get zero. So let's also try and do um, using these min and max values. Okay. So instead of sum, Oh, we're going to actually delete the round functions and we'll delete the end portion of the round function and we'll do um, what max tornado precipitation max no tornado precipitation uh, and then so this will be max and max here. And let's also say something like um, we're going to group by year. But let's also add in a where statement. So where year is greater than or equal to 1990. Mm, will that be enough? Year and then we don't need month in here. We can delete that as well. We're kind of adding everything in. So we're going to grab the max values for when there was a pers uh, either no precipitation or, uh, a or no tornado or a tornado. Okay, so then we can see here that there was ha hesitancy whenever we're talking about precipitation. There's more precipitation when there's no tornado, apparently. Um, so again, just like in the when we used here, we're using a where statement. Okay, um, we can also use any Boolean expressions as well as with a case. Okay, now we can also follow that with another query. Okay, so let's say um, something like this. Okay, because again, we know that for example, um, false is zero, true is one. Okay, so then we can use those statements. All right, as trues and falses when we use our case. So let's do something like a select month in here and we want to round the average case when rain or hail, then we can use the temperature else null end. Okay, and then we'll say uh, two to round by two um, as what we want this as I want to get rid of that as um, average precip temp okay and then we can do the same thing here as um, and I'm going to actually just do the whole thing uh, and what we want in here is we're actually going to negate this. Okay, so instead of um, doing a lot of difficult stuff, we're just going to say not. Okay, uh, and then we'll go through here and we'll say um, with non precipitation temperature, 
we'll get rid of that and then we also want to then say from station station data in here we want where the year is greater than 2000 uh, we want to group by by month and let's also just uh, limit our output to 10 to save some memory so we run this and we can see here that um, our per, uh, precipitation temp or average precipitation temperature with non precipitation as a general rule again you should expect that when there is precipitation in the air it should be a little bit colder and we do kind of see that as the general rule here and actually it is the rule at least with these first 10 values um, and again you could always uh, pass this off somewhere else and do some sort of other analysis as well um, I'm hoping that you guys found this useful and interesting. Um, if you guys did, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.